parent of a picky eater and do you serve separate meals to your child? If yes, you're going to find this article very, very interesting. We're going to talk about it and break it down. In case you're new here, I'm Talia. I'm a pediatric dietitian and I specialize in picky eaters. Here are the highlights from the article and I wanted to go through them. The first one is that for the most part, a huge amount of parents are making separate meals for picky eaters. This is something I talk about a lot, that when you do that and you cater and you over accommodate, you are going to cause the picky eating to be worse over time. And it's really simple for why that is. The child realizes, oh, I don't really have to eat that. You're going to make me something else. This was an interesting one, that one in eight still require their child to clean their plate and finish what's on their plate. I've done quite a few videos talking about how coercing children to eat more food is not helpful for them, and it's also not helpful for you in the long term, which is basically what this last point says, that both of these approaches can foster unhealthy eating habits over the long term. Now, something I want to point out is that a lot of parents who use things like pressure, like you need to have a no thank you bite, you can't leave the table until you finish everything, these are short-term band-aid solutions. This helps you as the parent feel better in the moment because you are forcing your child to do something. Like they're eating a vegetable, thank goodness, now they're eating at least eating a bite of the vegetable. Versus if you think about that in the long term, forcing and coercing children to eat things that they don't want to eat is actually going to cause down the track your child to not want to eat those foods. Think about your child now, they're a two or three year old, they could be a seven year old. By the time your child is a teenager, you're going to want them when they go out with their friends or they go and move to another state, that they go, that they actually eat a variety of food and they eat their fruits and vegetables and they eat a wide varied diet. That is the long term goal. And we are sabotaging that long term goal when we screw around in the short term by forcing them to try things that they don't want to. This is the point from the article that I really wanted to touch on because most parents want their children to eat, quote unquote, a healthy diet. But here's the thing, when parents cater and make those alternative meals, most of the time, the child is eating something far more unhealthy than what you had made the first time. A quick side story I wanted to share with you. I was on a discovery call today with um, a dad who has a three and a half year old, and he was saying that sometimes when she refuses to eat something, they make her favorite meal, which is uh, like a mac and cheese pasta from a box. And it's the healthier version of it, but it's still not quote unquote healthy. It's not balanced. It doesn't have fruits and veggies in it. It doesn't have lean, like any kind of a meat protein in it. It doesn't have cheese, but it's really macaroni and cheese. It's two things put together. Uh, so that's a really nice way of just putting that into perspective that just because the child is eating something, it's not necessarily the healthy, healthy thing that you want them to eat. That was a good thought. Put it you can pause and read this if you want to. I'm going to get myself out of the way. Um, but the part that I wanted to point out was um, right here where it talks about how um, encouraging children to finish their plate, which for some reason a lot of parents are still doing. Um, it actually encourages children to eat beyond when they are actually comfortably full. And I've said this before and I'll say it again in case you're hearing it for the first time. Your child is the only one who knows when they're actually full, just like you're the only one who knows when you're full. Now, a lot of parents will come at me and say, but I know my child can eat more than that, and I know that they're not possibly full after eating two bites of food. You're right, they're probably not full after eating two bites of food. But how would you feel if, let's say, you had had a really hard day and you were coming home and you weren't feeling well and you didn't really feel like eating very much? How would you feel if your spouse sat down next to you and was like, Talia, I know that you can eat more than three green beans. That's ridiculous. You can't possibly be full. It's very invalidating. It feels icky to even just say that. Like, we would never say that to another adult. So why would we consider saying that to a child? Leave me a comment and tell me, are you one of those parents who makes your child an alternative meal or forces your child to finish eating what's on their plate? Has anything that we talked about today helped you maybe reflect on why maybe that's not the best approach?